All right, my name is Bill Bainey. I started with RCA in November of 1960 in Camden, New Jersey. I arrived on the scene at the bright age of 24, had a wife, a new baby, and one on the way. And I was uh, most impressed by RCA and the size of that location at the time, which I think was between 17 and 18,000 employees. Uh, Huge. My position was uh, in the then called personnel department, now human resources, as an interviewer. Uh, the, the location consisted then of RCA corporate offices, some from personnel, then the law department, etc. The headquarters for government systems division, the headquarters for commercial electronic systems division, two operating systems in the government end, two operating systems in the commercial end being broadcast communication systems, mobile communications. There were kind of all over the place. I was, I was in Camden for three years before I ever got in the employee parking lot, to give you some idea of the size of this. Uh, there were also, a lot of people might forget this, but the electronic data processing division was manufactured and the computers were built in, in Camden at that time. So it was a huge operation. And the uh, HR department, of course, serviced all of them. So that was a, a, a unique experience, and one just trying to figure out what was going on in terms of uh, product, et cetera, was a challenge in itself. But it turned out, as far as I was concerned, to be a, a unique opportunity. Uh, there was no f formal training program, I would say, in the uh, HR department, but the process that they had could not have been better because you went through each of the chairs that were required for anyone who was going to go anywhere in human resources. With time in it, they got mentoring from people who really knew what they were talking about. So it was a great, a great and a fortunate experience for me, I think. Okay, so um, <clears throat> let's talk about your supervisors when you started. All right. <clears throat> I started, I was working for the manager of employment at the time. And it was, it was large enough then with 18,000 employees that there were departments within the employment activity that handled salaried employees. There were some that handled technical employees. There was a whole engineering department dedicated to recruiting, et cetera. Uh, so there was a supervisor of all employment. And my first three or four years doing recruiting, et cetera, I reported to one or two of those individuals. Very helpful. Again, no formal kind of training, et cetera, but so much real live stuff, this is really how it works, it was much appreciated. And I moved from there, as you go through the seats, if you will, from uh, employment to what they called wage and salary, that's not compensation today. Uh, again, had two supervisors there handling things like uh, uh, pricing or traveling to people, sending people to Japan out of the corporate offices, a, a great experience, which I had no idea how to do at that time. But this was good, again, because uh, we had I think about 8,000 hourly employees, about 4,000 engineers. Uh, so the compensation end of things was, was quite enlightening, et cetera. We also handled corporate uh, incentive compensation. Really good, good experience. Moved through those chairs. I went from the uh, wage and salary end of things into labor relations, which when I studied in college, that's really the main thing I was interested in. And of course, at that time, there were seven bargaining units in Camden, so all the labor relations you would ever want in a million years was there. Good good tutoring, good advice. Uh, really enjoyed the experience. And I guess so it was four or five years of that, and then I guess seven years I was moved in my first management role. And again, this was all no formal training, et cetera, but just the kind of experience that is priceless, et cetera. So, I got my first management assignment as the manager of that compensation department. Were you satisfied with your career progression? Did you feel like they recognized the value of your contribution? I'd say absolutely. Uh, I don't think anyone, I don't know where else you could have gone to get that kind of experience in that time frame. And I was compensated certainly fairly. I had no problem with that whatsoever. And I think the fact that they moved me from one assignment to the next was a pretty good indication that uh, I was doing okay. And it, I think it could not have been more fair. Okay. In your position, you dealt with a lot of RCA employees. Yes. Can you give us your general impression? Sure. I would think <coughs> 
this, this, the adage about the RCA family, and we all talk about it, et cetera, uh, it's real as far as I'm concerned. I'm going to tell you firsthand. This was not something dreamed up and said, oh, this is the RCA family. Uh, all of the employees that I talked with and dealt with, and of course I'm interviewing new employees all the time, but there seemed to be a, an esprit de corps, uh, a realization that uh, there's things bigger than their individual assignment, et cetera. And I find, that, I find this throughout. I've, Kind of, when I look back to it, it's kind of hard, almost hard to believe. I mean, I, the uh, bargaining units, et cetera, we all had our differences and arguments, et cetera. But I think the bottom line was, no matter what side of the table someone was on, there seemed to be an understanding that, uh, you know, there's one main cause. And if that main cause doesn't go, we're all going to be in trouble. But I think, in general, everyone seemed to, to be willing to work with one another, to help one another. And, you know, we went through some trying times, too, as we got out of that massive hiring. Some of the, we had some defense layoffs, et cetera, which were brutal, but I think everybody acted like a professional, and I certainly was pleased. But that, it's not just a, a word, RCA family, it, mean, it meant something, and I lived it. Um, what were some of the downsides in RCA? Well, I'm, I'm going to get back to the sad part. The downside was because it was the defense industry, we did have some major cutbacks, and that, that's brutal. You'd never like to see people being let go or laid off. And I think from that perspective, uh, if I had to say what was, the, what, what was the worst part of it, no question that was it, just living through that. I, I can't think of, There may be some other incidentals, but that was the one thing that would stand out in my mind. Could you talk about your coworkers? Yes. Co-workers, as I talked about, how my supervisors may have helped me. Now, remember now, in these slots in HR, everybody's kind of in their own thing. There's not two people really doing the same thing. But if someone has been there, I think the very first person who's, who I replaced spent, I thought, was a tremendous amount of time just getting me up to speed. And this, this was not unusual because everyone was kind of moving through the, the seats at the same time and always willing to help out and say, hey, don't, if you've got a problem, don't call, whatever. So within the HR department, that, that uh, team spirit, if you will, was uh, right on top and could, could not have been more helpful. I really mean it. Did you spend time with coworkers outside of uh, the working hours? Yes, I did. We, uh, we had a lot of time outside. And again, it was a pretty big department. In those days, there were about uh, probably 100 of us in the HR department. And we had, uh, you know, we played softball together. We touch football games together, parties at one another's houses. Uh, got to know a lot of them. You know, some no longer with us, unfortunately, but some were, became lifetime friends. And uh, yes, I, I would say that just carried this family idea on. And many of us, some of them were from the area. I was not from the area originally. So the, the being invited into that uh, venue, if you will, was very helpful to my career. What about the influence of RCA on South Jersey itself, on the region? I'm saying it would have to be huge. You know, I'm a little, maybe a little prejudiced, but not much. You figure 17, 18,000 people. If you look at Camden in 1960, uh, Campbell's Soup was still pretty big in Camden, right next to the RCA facility. But I don't think they had more than maybe 3,000, which is a lot of people. New York Ship down the road had probably over 20,000. So the three huge companies had an immense impact on South Jersey. It really did. Almost anywhere you went, oh, it's RCA. You worked for the, the old timers used to say you worked for the RCA. Uh, but it was RCA and Campbell Supa and New York Ship. They went downhill pretty quickly. But the impact on it, almost everywhere you went when you volunteered for things. And by the way, let me, let me just say now, RCA was into helping out the United Way in an incredible way. The corporation matched whatever those 18,000 employees did and then some. Uh, almost the second year I was there, I was encouraged to, to help out with things like the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, I ended up a little later on for, for 25 years being the, uh, uh, on the New Jersey Business and Industry Association, the co-director of that. Uh, all. RCA said, do it. We want you to do this. This is in the community. These are the kinds of things you ought to be doing. So that spirit, I think, was there and was supported right to the top of the house at RCA. Well, what about uh, over time, did you notice the development in South Jersey? Well, I did. Uh, 
And I remember now, these, this, the time that I was there, I was in Camden for 15 years and then left for 15 years to go to other RCA facilities and GE facilities, et cetera. But there was a lot of development. Unfortunately, those, the cutbacks didn't help us because things were going downhill. RCA was, you know, on the, on the cusp of the technical world. There was not much question about that. As far as what was going on in the community, you know, again, we continued to support, even though the numbers were going down, we helped with the United Way with volunteers and with money. Uh, I think that the development end of it would have been much better if we did not have the cutbacks, but, you know, it was there, and they were always in the community, and they were always in the forefront of what was ever going on. How did your environment change over time? Well, the work environment itself, I think uh, computers were a major change in the AR, HR department, maybe not, not as much as engineering, et cetera, but certainly it changed an enormous how the work was done and how it was processed, et cetera. The, uh, I guess the other major change, we always had, we always have to have the tools and the people to get things done. Benefits became a major issue. When I was first hired, that was a nothing. I didn't mean a nothing, but no one paid for benefits. It was just a, an expense that was incurred by the company, et cetera. You didn't really need top-notch professionals to run it. It was kind of an administrative issue. Over the years, that became an enormous problem for everything. I mean, you, you better get your top-notch people into benefits. So from that perspective, that, that, that really changed. Uh, again, it was, I think, labor relations became a less, less of a significant event than we did labor before that because of less people. Uh, compensation became more complex. Uh, and we went through a lot of, we went through wage freezes. Well, that'll do something for your wage and salary department. And then it was catch up all the time, and the hiring new graduates, et cetera. The, as inflation hit that, it was like, wow, we, you jumped sevenfold from one year to the next. So there were a lot of things in, in the environment that, that made us change, and we were right with it. People talk about um, family members working for RCA. I, I've heard several times my father worked there, my grandfather worked there. Can you comment on that? Did you observe any of that? Absolutely. There was no question about it. There was, and yeah, I don't want to call it nepotism because that's where we got many, many of our good employees. But yes, there was no question. Un, it was not uncommon to have three or four or five members of the same family working at RCA. And they could be in different fields. It's, you could have an engineer, you could have somebody on the bench. But yes, uh, I think an incredible number of people. And that's a good sign. If you want your kids to work there, that's terrific. Good, great place to work. What about husbands, meeting wives? Uh, yeah, I did see. I witnessed that. Not myself, but I witnessed a number of people in the department that I worked in within three years were married. Uh, this was secretaries or two professionals or whatever. Not, un not uncommon at all. And I guess our department would be very small compared to the others. So if it was big there, it had to be bigger in the larger departments. Mm -hmm. How did your children view your work at RCA? Uh, I think they recognized the fact that uh, the old man was pretty dedicated because sometimes they didn't see him for a while. But there is no question in my mind that those three, three children that I have know the kind of uh, respect that I have for RCA and the, the companies that follow. No, no question about it. As you looked around your neighborhoods, did you observe other RCA employees in the same area? Sure, yeah. I was in a, in a relatively new housing development and I think the first two years I, I commuted with three other engineers, three engineers and myself, and then they switched and went somewhere else, which was not uncommon, moving within RCA. It wasn't just Camden. I mean, you could move, you could move anywhere in the country, as I did later on that in the country. But yes, a lot of that from that, and that was a brand new community, so it worked lots of that going on. So I asked you to just sum up. Your career, your company, and all the rest about RCA, what would you say? Well, all right, let me tell you where the career went. I told you I started in Camden. I was there for 15 years. I left as manager of then combined labor relations and wage and salary, it was called. I was given an opportunity at that time to go to either Meadowlands, Pennsylvania, or East Windsor, Heightstown, New Jersey, as the HR director. I chose Heightstown kind of like the space business. So the career was, I went from uh, Camden to Astro, 
in Heightstown, where we were in the midst of, they had just finished a downsizing, so we were hiring, they were building the Nimbus, and I forget the other house satellites. Very exciting business. And it was a different community altogether. It was, uh, there were no, no bargaining units there, but we were bringing in people very quickly. I got a chance to learn and go to see space shots, et cetera, that I had never even dreamed that had gone on. I think I was accepted by that management team very graciously, and I think I brought something to the table, and I think I learned an awful lot from there. Just quickly, I was there for four years, uh, five years. Moved from there to take over the HR director at Morristown, New Jersey. And that was when Ad 70, or, or what we now know as Aegis, was all about. Bill Goodwin and company, that was won finally that next year. So this was a huge boom. I was there for two years. I went from there to back to Cherry Hill, where the headquarters of the government systems division had moved where I was given a responsibility for, for uh, compensation and organization and development and employment for the whole government systems division, and then were about 12,000 employees. That would be Camden, Burlington, Massachusetts, Morristown, New Jersey, and Astro. And we were given some commercial credits because then we picked up Meadowlands and some of the broadcast plants. And I was there until 86 when uh, the merger occurred with GE, and from there I moved to take over the HR director spot for the whole Astro Space Division that was East Windsor and Valley Forge, and putting those two together from an HR perspective may have taken two or three of the hairs that were used to be on my head up here, but that was a unique experience. Two kind of different companies, uh, great companies, etc. I think there was, I sensed more formality in GE than there was in RCA, but they were great companies. And, you know, you can look back and say, oh, that screwed up my career. It's actually provided some more opportunities, if you think about it. Maybe there were fewer spots at the top, but there certainly was a lot more very significant roles for HR people in the, uh, in the areas. And it, it opened up even broader spaces. So I moved from that role to take over the, uh, all of the technology with Jim Feller. I guess it was called Aerospace Technology. We had uh, ATL in Camden. We had E-Labs up in Syracuse. Uh, I forget what it was. Oh, there was there were still some of the people in Valley Forge. But I moved my office from Valley Forge to Morristown again. Uh, I was there for three or four years, and uh, Martin Marietta came along. I took GE. And then we looked at the facility there and decided, gee, maybe we can make the... ATL is what it was in Morristown at the time. We said, maybe we can move into Camden and save some... Uh, some rent, if you will. Uh, and we did. We moved back, I think, 1996. So I was in Camden for 15 years, left for 15 years, and came back, ironically, for more than 15 years. And then in 19... When did, 90, when did L3 come about? 96? Okay, 96. I was asked by the then HR director, Mike Riley, to consider uh, joining L3 after it spun off. So I retired from Lockheed Martin. I think I moved my offices, three offices down the aisle, and then joined uh, L3. And I spent, believe it or not, I think 15 years there and retired after 52 years with all enchilada. Great career as far as I was concerned. Now, along this time, you encountered a man named John Maestron. Can you explain where you encountered him? Yeah, John Maestron was a corporate maven, uh, and I believe his, his main thrust was in organization development, and I met John, it seems to me a lot of years ago, and I guess it was, but you know, you would go to corporate staff then and say, oh, this, this, is, the, this is the top of the heap, et cetera. I, he and I were certainly not bosom buddies at all, but I knew who he was, and I think he probably recognized who I was, because I was moving up the ranks, okay. Uh, but it was a great, I thought corporate staff was a, was a very, uh, talented and professional group of people, and John was right on top of them. I, uh, I always was impressed by the whole, the whole group at 30 Rock, as, as we used to call it anyway. Yeah. And I had an opportunity to join that and was not interested in going to sunny downtown New York, uh, so I passed up on that. Okay, is there anything else that uh, you uh, would like to add to the interview? No, I guess I, I don't want to get mushy, but... You know, 52 years was a, a big chunk. I didn't think I'd ever live for 52. I tell you, a funny experience when they first, I first was hired, and they said, well, you have to retire at 65. 
I said, well, that's really not a problem since no one in my family has ever lived to be 65. So, uh, so we went through that. But I, I have to tell you that I don't think uh, you'd have to write to get the experiences that I had there. A lot of great people. Uh, you know, did I not get some of the things maybe I thought I could get? Yeah, not sure, like all of us. But uh, there were not any really major disappointments that I, that I didn't handle. And uh, I, if we hadn't had some cutbacks, I think I might still be there. The last couple of years with L3, unfortunately, we started to cut back. And that's, if you've ever been in HR, that's no fun at all, believe me. And uh, so I decided to try some volunteer stuff. But no, it was a, it was a challenge. It was a satisfying experience. And uh, I don't think I traded in for anything.